Hello guys and welcome to New Horizons Labs. Okay, so today we're going to start off our New Horizons Labs mod showcase laboratories. Our laboratory facility is built and maintained by the company New Horizons, and today we will be using it for its first mod showcase. Today we are going to be going over the mod Witchery, which is a mod that adds witchcraft into Minecraft. It's a very cool mod with many unique features, and it's one of my favorite personal mods too, as well. So we're going to be going to lab number 7, Magic Experimentation, and Dr. Heisenberg's to show off this mod. Okay, so where do you start in witchery, one may ask? Well, I would say that building a witch's oven is the best place to start. So in order to build your witch's oven, you're going to need five iron ingots for the build. You're also going to need a bucket and some iron bars. So you need a good amount of iron in total, but once you have your iron, you're good and ready for the rest of your witch's oven. Second, what do you do with this witch's oven, I hear you ask? Well, you can burn, you can cook foods, you can burn saplings and wood, and make that's pretty much it. You can't use it for cooking ores and smelting iron like you could a traditional furnace, but that's why you have both your witch's oven and also your traditional furnace. Okay, so I said you could burn saplings in a furnace. What type? Well, you can burn all four vanilla saplings and also some witchery specific saplings, the alder sapling, the hawthorn sapling, and the rowan sapling. We'll go in on how we obtain these saplings later. So for now, we're just going to put in our spruce saplings. Okay, so we're burning our saplings, and as you'll see, all we're going to get from it is wood ash. And that's good, because wood ash is useful, but we need to get some other things. Because when you're burning these saplings, fumes are being released, and we want to try to capture these fumes. And to do that, we need clay jars. To make clay jars, we're going to take this raw clay, it's uncooked, and we're going to put it in this pattern. And then we're going to make soft clay jars. And you, as you can see, you get quite a few. So, we're going to take our soft clay jars and put them in the furnace. And the furnace will smelt up our clay jars and give us hardened clay jars. Because if you guys have ever worked with clay in real life, you'll know that you need to uh, put it in the kiln before you can use it. So let's take our clay jar, go over to our witch's oven, and put it in. And let's see if we get lucky and get some fumes. Not this time, let's check again. And as you can see, we're getting one wood ash per each sapling burned, so it's an even yield of wood ash to saplings. Okay, so we will come back to that in a second. The second thing that you should do in witchery is make some mutandus, which is a mutating kind of rub, I guess you could call it, that you rub on plants, and it allows them to mutate into different types of plants. You make mutandus with wood ash from burned saplings, Hint of Rebirth, Cactus Green, and Bone Meal. Me okay, so Hint of Rebirth is what you get from burning your saplings. And we will go and see if we got any. So see, we got some Hint of Rebirth from burning our spruce saplings. And then also, we used Mandrake Root in this. Where did I get Mandrake Root? Well, Witchery adds some very cool crops to the game. Oh, I almost fell off there. And one of those is Mandrake Root. So basically, you're given Mandrake seeds and you plant those seeds. Witchery also adds belladonna flowers and belladonna seeds and water artichoke. That hasn't grown quite yet, so we won't bother it. Okay, so we have our mutandus. What do we do with it now? Well, I've set up a bit of a plant preserve, I guess you could call it, in the back of this room. So we will go ahead and just right-click with the mutandus, and we can see that it changes the plant. And we can do this an infinite number of times. And... As you can see, we're also going through all of the saplings that are witchery specific, like our alder sapling, our mushrooms, but those aren't saplings, but still. And then you can, our rowan sapling, so it's just it's showing you all the saplings that you can make in Hawthorne. But what we're looking for is something called Spanish moss, which we just got. Now, in order to harvest Spanish moss, you need shears, and I think I may have... No, I don't. Okay, so we'll just grab some shears really quickly. So, shears. Okay. Now, in order to harvest Spanish moss, you need shears, like I was saying. Because if you harvest vines, well, sometimes you get grapes, but typically you, don't, you do not get the vine. And that's the same with Spanish moss. So we'll go ahead and harvest that Spanish moss. So now we have our Spanish moss. 
what do we do with it? Well, witchery allows you to create poppets, and it's kind of a strange term, but some people may think of a voodoo poppet, and that may help you, like, kind of visualize what we're talking about. So, in order to craft a poppet, you're going to need four pieces of wool, two pieces of Spanish moss, a bone needle, and some string. A bone needle is just a bone and some flint, and you get eight per yield. And now we have a poppet. Okay, now in order to use our poppet, we need to first bind it. So in order to bind your poppet, you need a thing called a taglock kit. To make a taglock kit, you need a bone needle and a glass bottle. Now, to use your taglock kit and to taglock someone, you either need to click on... Oh, that bed's messed up. You either need to click on yourself... You can't click on yourself, but you need to click on them when they're not looking. Or you can click on their bed, which is what I'm going to do here. And now I have a taglock kit taglock to me. Okay, now what I can do is bind the taglock to the poppet by... Well, I guess first we need to make our specific poppet type. So what we're going to be making today is a fire damage prevention poppet. In order to make that, you use two ember moss, two wool of bat, and your poppet. And now you can bind your poppet. There we go. So now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I put some lava under my bed, because that's a really smart thing to do. I can stand in the... That didn't work. Why didn't that work? That's strange. Hmm. Well, that didn't work. I don't know. I guess it's working. I guess it doesn't allow you to, like, totally survive the damage, or like, negate it entirely, but it does do a pretty good job. Can we stand in this kit? No, we can't stand in the cauldron. Okay, well there we go. Now we have poppets explained. Basically, don't go swimming with a fire protection poppet in lava, because it will not save you. Okay, let's just dump all this back here. Cool. Next, what we're going to be going into is how we get power in witchery. In witchery, there is a multi-block structure called an altar. To craft, altar to craft an altar, you're going to need six blocks, and to craft those blocks, you need stone bricks, rowan wood from rowan saplings, exhale of the hormon, and breath of the goddess. Exhale of the hormon is craft from burning oak saplings in your witch's oven, and exhale or breath of the goddess is crafted from or obtained by burning birch saplings in your witch's oven now we place down our six altar blocks in a two by three rectangle and then we have our altar we right click on it to access the ui as you can see we have 751 power in our altar and that power is gathered from all of the natural things around like the spanish moss on the ceiling all the mushrooms the flowers on the wall the vines basically everything that is in this lab that's organic even the wood is giving power to the altar but sometimes you're going to need 8000 power in order to do anything so how do you get up to 8000 power well you can boost the power of your altar by putting certain things on it like for instance, you can put either a torch or a candelabra. So you just shift right click, and as you can see, the candelabra increased the recharge speed from 1 to 3. So now it's going up by 30 and not 10. You can also put on a skull. You can put either a skeleton skull or a wither skull, but a skeleton skull is not as powerful as a wither skull. So as of right now, we have 754 power. If we put the wither skull on, we have 2,262. It's a pretty big increase. Now, you can also put on an Arthana, which does not boost the power or recharge, it does boost the range though. So before your altar, let's say, had a range of 10 blocks, now it would have 20, so it doubles the range of the altar. Also, we can put on a Chalice. Now if we put on a normal Chalice, it's going to boost the power by about 800. Now let's punch this until it breaks. Punch, 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 punch. Should pop off relatively soon. Come on, Chalice. If not, okay, let's get a pickaxe. Uh, we will use a Viterous pickaxe. There we go. Now, 
What we can do to make our chalice more effective is craft it with some redstone soup, and I'll go over how to make that later. And then you can put your filled chalice on the table, and as you can see, that boosted it by about 18 or 1600. So it's much better if you can afford to make a, ch a filled chalice, because it'll boost the power of your altar much more. Okay, now we will be going over a distillery. A distillery allows you to distill ingredients into other ingredients. The example that we will be using today is gypsum, which is used to make chalk. Let's go in our distilling chest, and let's get our quicklime, which is made from wood ash, our foul fumes, which is made from burning oak in the witch's oven, and our just fired clay jars. And let's put all of that into the distillery. And as you can see, the distillery starts working and distilling the ingredients. Now, the distillery gets its power from the altar. And as of right now, our altar isn't going down because the re recharge speed is so high. But if we get rid of our wither skeleton skull and our candelabra, the altar starts losing power because it cannot recharge as fast as the distillery is draining it. So let's go ahead and put these items back on the distillery. Okay. Now, we're almost about to get our first gypsum. And now gypsum is used for making chalk. And chalk is very important for circle magic, which is a very vital witchcraft magic source. And here we go. We get gypsum, oil of entral, and slime balls. Let's just put the oil of entral and slime ball in here. Okay. Now, I was talking about chalk. In order to craft ritual chalk, you need wood ash, gypsum, and tear of the goddess. Now, tear of the goddess is also made in the distillery, and we can make it by putting lapis and breath of the goddess in the distillery. And now we'll just wait for the distillery to distill that, and then we'll go and look back. So, you make your ritual chalk with these ingredients, but then you need different types of chalk, like golden chalk, which draws the center part of the circle, or you may need otherware chalk, which is um, basically ghost and summoning spectral beings, kind of. It's your mystical mystery chalk. And then you need infernal chalk, which summons demons and basically your hellish things. So there are the three different types of chalks, which are all used for different things. Okay, let's check back and see if it's made it yet. Almost. And this should be making our tier of the goddess. There we go. Awesome. So we'll just grab those ingredients out, and we'll dump that in the distilling chest as well. Okay. Now, to use the chalk, all you do is you craft your chalk, and then you can just draw with it. So we just drew on the floor. The infernal chalk is my favorite because of the particle effects. I mean, yeah, the other word chalk's pretty cool, but I like the fire. And then you have your gold chalk. And it doesn't like when you right-click on it. But there is your chalk. Okay, next. In order to go over... In order to be a witch, you need a broom. And to craft a broom, you need two sticks and three hawthorn saplings. Now, how, how do I put the broom down? Like, how can I fly with it? Well, what you need to do first is get into brewing, because you need to make flying ointment to get your brew to work. Now, witchery brewing is a very easy process. All you need to do is craft your brews and infusions book by using belladonna, ink sacs, odor of purity, feathers, and a book. And then this book will tell you exactly what you need to make all of the brews. The first brew we will be making is redstone soup, which is what we used earlier to fill our chalice with. Here we go. Now, to set up your kettle, you need to light a fire below your kettle. You can use wood, but netherrack burns forever, so if you don't want to have to keep replacing it, I would use netherrack. And then you place your kettle over the fire. Now, you can use any block to hang it up, but in this video, because I've needed chest, I use chest to hang it up. Okay, now, the first thing we're going to be brewing, as I said, is redstone soup. Now, to start a brew, you need to fill your kettle with water. There we go. And then, redstone soup calls for redstone, drop of luck, wool of bat, tongue of dog, belladonna, and mandrake. And in order to get the redstone soup, we're going to need a glass bottle. So let's go ahead and dump in the redstone, the drop of luck, the wool of bat, the tongue of dog, the belladonna, and the mandrake. And those green particle effects, that means that your brew has been made, or a brew has been made, so you can right click with it. Oh no, fire. Fire's everywhere. There we go. Okay. So, we've made our redstone soup. Now, the next thing we're going to be making is our flying ointment. To make our flying ointment, we need redstone soup, potion of sweetness, diamond, feather, wool of bat, and belladonna flower. So let's get our redstone soup, 
our potion of swiftness, our diamond, our feather, our wool of bat, and our belladonna flower. And we need to refill the kettle and get a glass bottle. Okay, so we fill the kettle, we throw in the redstone suit, potion of swiftness, diamond, feather, wool of bat, and belladonna. And we... So black swirls typically mean that your altar doesn't have enough power. So if we go over here and check on the altar, we can see that it doesn't. So we'll just wait for the altar to fill up, and then we'll come back and get our brew. Okay. The recharge speed should be going pr fairly quickly. Okay. Now, after we have gotten our flying ointment, we will go down to our circle our um, circle magic area. There we go. The altar is filled and the brew is usable. There we go. So now we have flying ointment and our brew. Okay, let's climb down these vines. We'll jump off and then climb back at the bottom. There we go. And over to our circle magic. Now, our altar upstairs had about three... Th I Okay, another cool thing. You can also mu use mutandus, mutandus on plants to make ember moss. And ember moss lights you on fire, like this. But since we have or had our fire protection puppet, that could have saved us. Okay, our altar down here has 8,000 power, which is a lot more than the 3,000 we had up there. But that's just because there's so much nature around it, and that's why witchery really needs to be done in a place where you can have a lot of nature, and that's why it's difficult to do it in a cave or somewhere where there's not a lot of plant life, because your altar, it'll never really have enough power. Okay, to do our broom infusion, we need... We just go to the brew, or the, our right of infusion. We just go to brew, and we see that it needs to be done at night. So we'll just pull this lever. There we go, nighttime. We need 3,000 altar power. We have 8,000, so we're fine. And we need a broom and flying ointment. So I keep getting set on fire. But here we have our circle magic site, I guess you could call it. We have our gold chalk in the center, and then we have white chalk and more white chalk and red chalk. And in the book, we can tell that the white chalk is used to make the two inner circles for the broom infusion. Okay, so let's throw our broom and our flying ointment into the circle and right click. The circle will suck up the magic and we will get a broom. Very cool things about this broom is that you can name them and you can also dye them. So we'll just get some experience really quickly. And then we'll go into an anvil, and what shall we call it? We are going to call our broom the Nimbus 2001. Perfect. Now we can place our broom down and fly away. Whee! This is cool. So we can, like, fly up here. We can fly over the compound. We can fly back down. We can fly- oh, that's not our um, nuclear missile silo, don't pay any attention to that. Let's just keep on flying our sewage outflow pipe down there, and we will land. Landing with these isn't the easiest, but you get the hang of it eventually. Obviously, I have it. Let's go ahead and just break our- actually, no, it's dye it first. So, dyes. Let's click on dyes, and let's dye our broom lime green. And you can click on the end, and it turns lime green. Perfect. Okay. And now we just break our broom and we have our Nimbus 2001. 